guy knight is down. He'll put push a hundred. <laughs> Too excited, man. <laughs> then I saw the eye guard. <clears throat> He's a shooter, man. You gotta shoot him. <laughs> Does anybody have their spotting server? I'm really enjoying myself. It's not exactly the weather. You might think. He had the wind. He had the range. He had a rest, and he could comfortably and easily squeeze that trigger. It's like standing on a basketball court with Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird. This is what it's like to be in the shadow of greatness. Once you've hunted coos deer, they will forever haunt your soul. Jack O'Connor considered the coos deer the most difficult of all deer species to harvest. And it's an amazing quote and it's so true. Once you've hunted coos deer, they will forever haunt your soul in a good way. They get deep inside you. Some days you're amazed by them. Some days you're totally frustrated by them. But ultimately, once you've hunted coos deer, you'll want to do it again. As the largest coos deer outfitter in the country, I had a lot of apprehension when a few of my lead guides asked me and invited me to go down to Mexico and Sonora to partner with them on a coos deer hunting operation. I joked with my wife saying, I think I'm gonna book this trip down there to Mexico and I'm gonna pay full price. And she said, why would the largest coos deer outfitter in the world pay full price to go on a coos deer hunt? We laughed about it a little bit, but I said, if I'm gonna partner up with Pat and George on a property in Sonora, I have to go there as a client first. I have to see what the flora and fauna is like. I have to see what crossing the border is like. I have to check all those boxes as a client before I could partner with them on the business. Man, oh man, am I glad I did. A lot of people have apprehension, myself included, about what it would be like to cross the Mexican border with firearms. I can tell you, the organization and the preparation logistically we do to get your firearms across the border is second to none. You always have somebody with you from our operation, and the process is easy so long as you've done your paperwork correctly. But you know what? If you don't want to take your firearms, I promise you, we have plenty of Huskama scopes in camp. A lot of my coos deer clients come from the Midwest, and believe it or not, they become some of my most frequent repeat customers. Why? Because these are folks that have eastern whitetails in their backyard that they can shoot off their porch, and that's precisely why I tell them, you've got to come hunt with me in Arizona or Sonora. You can't shoot these off their porch. Hunting a coos whitetail deer, properly pronounced cows by the way, is more like a sheep hunt in the sense that it's high point glassing, looking for a mature buck and then making a stock that could get you within 100 yards, but may not allow you to get even closer than six or 700 yards. It's the perfect combination of both. Not only that, but once you've seen a coos deer up close, you will be amazed by how dainty and small they are, but yet how incredibly tough they have to be to live in the Sonoran Desert, one of the most inhospitable climates in all of the world. There is no doubt about it. Once you've pursued coos deer, you'll be in love with them like we are, and your first hunt most likely won't be your last. I'm going to ask you a question right now. How many white-tailed deer species do you think there are in North America? Now get a number in your head. It's 39. I'm guessing most of you thought 7, 8, maybe 10. There are 39 white-tailed deer species just in North America alone. And the coos deer is slowly but surely becoming one of the most desired. Maybe it's because tags are so attainable. 
over the counter in Mexico, guaranteed to hunt with me in Arizona the first year I put you in a guaranteed coos deer draw. Maybe it's the overall thrill of hunting like what Jack O'Connor called it, a poor man sheep hunt, where you hunt almost essentially the same way as you do sheep. High points, big optics, and glass. Maybe it's because of the variety of seasons you can hunt them from August to January, from the velvet, pre-rut, to the peak of the rut. Maybe it's because of the satisfaction of getting prepared in the months before your hunt just to be able to see and glass and hunt these amazing deer. Maybe you just want to learn how to become better behind your own optics because if you can glass a coos deer, I promise you you can glass any man animal on any continent around the world. The coos deer itself may be one of the most overlooked big game species in North America. Only occupying Arizona, a small portion of New Mexico, and northern Old Mexico, the coos deer range is very small, very limited, which I think leads to some of the lack of hunting interest. However, over the years, shows like this that you're watching today, word of mouth, but also the coos deer being recognized as a required species for certain slams has made the coos deer one of the most desired trophies today in North America. Hopefully after watching this episode, you'll be interested too. Once again, once they're in your heart, they're in your soul for life. Other reasons my clients tell me coos deer hunting is so popular is because of its affordability. And while it's real money and everybody only has so many resources, to think you can hunt coos deer for less than $5,000, in some cases two and $3,000, really make a guided hunt affordable to hunters who may not normally be able to afford to do a guided hunt. If you're somebody who's passionate about shooting and want to test yourself at long distances, a coos deer is going to give you that opportunity. When a client asks me, Dan, how far should I be able to shoot? I often tell them it would be great if you were comfortable out to four, even 500 yards. And while it's my job as a guide to get you as close as you need to be, for my very prolific shooters, it's not uncommon for them to be able to take a coos buck at six, 700 yards, and as you'll see in today's episode, even beyond. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Cryptek Camo, Hawkins Precision, Polestar Outdoors, Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. In one of my first years with the Best of the West, I was able to share a horseback camp with John Porter and Ed Cochran in Southern Arizona, and we had a blast. And it was so much fun and meant a lot to me to be able to swap stories with one of the best sheep hunters in the world with one of the largest coos operators in the world. We had a blast, we had some long range shots. John himself said, these are amazing animals. I don't know how you guys glass these up and find them. And I knew then that John Porter and I would be doing a lot of coos deer hunts together in the future. Well, we're finally out here on this coos deer hunt with the infamous Dan Evans. And I keep asking him here. We've been sitting here for maybe 10 minutes with Bing Glass. And I'm hoping that he's going to show me a coos deer so I know what they look like. Then maybe I'll be able to spot one, but we'll see. You can show me one. Racket. Where did he hit? Back. Huh? Back. I think I called it this before. This is the right of the tree. There. I think he did. I think I was a gooder one. 
<laughs> wow. Whew. Laid there for a while on that one. <laughs> Way to go, John. What a shot, man. Yeah, man. Well, we laid here for, I don't know, two hours. Yeah, about two hours. <laughs> Coos deer time. Yep, waiting for this deer to get up, just bedded up there looking around. The birds are messing with him, and he finally just decided to get up, I guess. Yeah. That was a bit of a pult there. Yeah, 9, 9.20 in the morning. Glassed yeah. him up a couple hours ago, almost 700 yards. Uh, <clears throat> true coos deer hunt. I mean, you glass them up at long range. You know, you take your time, get set up. John did an awesome job. We all know what a good shooter he is. Found that deer, and I think we laid him down, brother. I think we laid him down. <laughs> Way to go, man. Got the deal done with that left-handed shot. He, we just couldn't get the angle, and John being the proficient marksman he is, he was able to get himself positioned for a left-handed shot at uh, just about 690 yards. I mean, you gotta get out there and practice with your equipment, but by golly, it works when you do it right. Great job, way to go, my friend. Thanks, bud. Well, you know, that left-handed shooting is something that I practice a little bit just so that I can do it. Um, it's not natural for me especially laying in a 90 degree position there like that. But, um, you know, I, I practice it enough to where, you know, I can make it happen. Yep. And uh, I'd sure recommend to anybody to practice that a little bit. And the key to it is, it's never gonna feel comfortable. You just gotta get in a position, get your gun properly supported front end, back end, which I had really good support on both ends. I have to really watch my cant when I shoot left-handed because it's very unnatural for me. So I had to keep raising my head, looking at my level. My level's on the wrong side for a left-handed shot, but you know, we kept looking at that and so made it work anyways. Well, and, your, uh, your practice and training paid off. I mean, an old warrior, cut up years, great rack, you know, great age class. I mean, everything yeah. you want in a coos deer. Just a really, really fine piece of work. Great these, shooting. These are just a beautiful little animal, aren't they? They are. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I think they're the most beautiful of the North American deer species. They're dainty, they're delicate, but yet they live in one of the harshest places in the world. I like that delicate little face on them. Mm -hmm. Both Ed and John took incredible coos deer bucks at long range. I was so glad to be able to share it with our audience, and I was so glad personally to have a camp with them. It won't be the last one. When you think of Mexico, you probably think of sunshine and beaches, and you wouldn't be wrong. But we weren't greeted by that at all our first day in Sonora. It was rainy, a little bit of ice, and there was dense fog. It really didn't seem like we were in Mexico, it didn't even seem like we were in Arizona. But we knew because it was the rut, because it was January, if we stayed with it, there was a chance of finding a slammer buck on day one. Well, we wouldn't know it from the weather, but we're coos deer hunting during the rut in Sonora, Mexico with Pat and George. So good to be here, this is a long time in the coming. Been wanting to expand the business down here for a long time. And the weather doesn't look like it today with the wind and the rain, but it actually gives us really good glassing opportunities because in theory, most of the bigger bucks are gonna be on this leeward side staying out of the wind. So since we're in these big canyons and draws, it eliminates about 50% of the glassing allowing you to focus on the leeward side. So stay tuned, it should be a great day and a great week. A lot of my clients ask me, you know, if you've been guiding coos deer for nearly two decades, you must have an incredible trophy room. And I laugh and tell them, my clients do, but until this episode, I had never killed a buck over 100 inches myself. Times are changing. When it comes to hunting coos deer, it's an optics, optics, optics hunt. You'll often see me with big glass on a tripod, and I'll never go anywhere without my Husqvarna 10x42s around my neck. Oftentimes, you're not even looking for a deer in the brush. You're looking for the twitch of an ear, the sun glistening off the tip of an antler, maybe the flagging of the tail. Even though it's the rut and bucks are on their feet more, the reality is a coos deer is called the gray ghost of the desert for a reason. 
There is no such thing as a free lunch when it comes to hunting coos deer, and that's another aspect that makes them so rewarding to hunt. After a very easy border crossing in the morning of day one, we were greeted to a wonderful lunch in town, and then all the excitement was building up to our arrival at the ranch. When we got there, I don't think we spent more than 20 minutes throwing down our gear, and putting on our packs, because we wanted to see the woods. We didn't see any shooter bucks that afternoon, but we got a really good lay of the land. You could see how beautiful it was. And despite some pretty nasty weather with the prospects for it to get worse over the next couple days, we still saw a few bucks that got our excitement and our aspirations and our hopes up for the next day. Mexico doesn't disappoint, even in the rain. Chris Ledoux sings one of my favorite songs of all time called This Cowboy's Hat, and he talks about how his cowboy hat is tattered, torn, and stained with sweat. The same could be said with my Best of the West 300 win. Over the years, you've watched it go around the world with me, different continents, different countries, different places, and different cultures. And every year, I think this is the year I'm gonna call the shop in Cody and tell them, hey guys, it's time to send me something new and updated. Just like Chris Ledoux's cowboy hat, I can't let go of this rifle. Now it's here in Mexico with me, doing the dirty work in the rain. No rust, no problems, just accuracy, pinpoint shooting, time after time. I may never give up this rifle, and Chris Ledoux will have never given up his hat. For more information about the products and gear used in today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Cryptek Camo, Hawkins Precision, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable, Huskama Optics, and LongRangeStore.com. At dinner on day one, everybody at the ranch said tomorrow's going to be a bad day. The weather's really rolling in. And me being the perpetual optimist, I said, no way. This is Mexico. Tomorrow's going to be beautiful and sunny. Well, guess who was right? The locals. It was a dismal day. The cloud depth dropped to nearly the mountains, and you couldn't see very far. It, there was an opportunity to even just give up and say we're not even going out today, but there was no...